Right. So uh, we're going to talk about we're going to talk about Liu Kang. Right. Uh, I reckon he's going to be the big bad. I reckon he's going to be the big bad uh, based on just a just a couple of of interesting feelings I get from right from the old trailer. The old trailer that they dropped. Stop bad. Just want, I just want to have my, just want to talk about my opinion on this trailer, right? Now, it's obvious, like at the end of the trailer, where he's like, "Oh well, you know, um, you chosen to basically just, you know, cause problems, and I'm going to uh, tear your arms off and turn your face into the next, uh, you know, dinner plate." Right? So there's that. And and that's the feeling I get with Liu Kang now. Like, I used to like Liu Kang in terms of... Like, I still like the character. Uh, except for his... Except for the way he's portrayed now. He's portrayed as this... Just this... I don't know, man. I can't... Sh he's just awful character. You know? Just really crap. A lot of arrogance. Um, and I think that... Because of that, Liu Kang will be the bad guy. Because he is trying to create this utopian realm or this universe that no matter what you do, people are still going to find, like, you know, they're still going to find, you know, a way to be bad or, or, or become bad, right? You cannot create perfection. Now, uh, if there's any. Uh, fellow Christians out there you'll understand that perfectly is that um, you know we are all capable of great good and all capable of great evil um, and it's what we do with that choice makes us good people or bad people and I think that's the thing is that despite him thinking that he can rewrite everything and go well I'm gonna fix this issue, this issue here so this doesn't happen and this issue here so that doesn't happen it doesn't matter because it's still, you know, you, you know, the, the the sad part about all of this is that we'll probably get through all of this. I think somebody said it the other day. I don't know if I said it, but somebody said it. They go, it'd be funny that like we get through the entire story, and Liu Kang is just like, right, get right in here, you go, just <laughs> take over, bro. I can't, I can't deal with this, right? And that's the thing, right? And I wouldn't, but you know what? I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised that you know, um, and, and it is. Like, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to sit here and lie and say that I'm happy with how Raiden looks. He looks ridiculous. He's he's a child, a little Asian dude, right? It looks ridiculous considering what we know of Raiden, and he still has his powers. It's not like he's just some standard martial art. Liu Kang still gave him allowed him to have his lightning powers it's just, just just it's weird and the funny part is though is that because i was thinking about this more because it's like well it makes sense that raiden would appear asian to asian themed sort of areas right and i understand that like that makes perfect sense and i agree with that but he's not a god anymore so what difference does it make how he looks we've got other ethnic uh you know different races in here as well so it doesn't really matter um so that sort of stuff, it's those little intricacies in storytelling and, and, and consistency that bother me, right? So it's not just that, I also, and because they put out that tweet about sort of like fatality is, you know, more or whatever the hell it said, right? I wouldn't be surprised, um, I wouldn't be surprised if um, Hataru is involved right so first and first and foremost Pataru is involved all right secondly uh if he's involved he could very well be um he could he could very well be um like like a second in command to Liu Kang you know kind of like his uh his his general of the realms if you will and he goes around like so it's kind of like, um, you know, when you see those, like, 
uh, you know, sort of like cyberpunk slash futuristic, especially in anime and stuff where they create like a utopia, right? But but for in order for that utopia to be held in place in, in the specific way that they're requiring, there is this massive tyrannical rule just under the surface that we don't know about. And then when people start to see that and then people get silenced and all sorts of stuff. So it's the kind of the same thing that, you know, while Liu Kang might seem benevolent and whatnot, when he starts to see people misbehave, he's like, yeah, that's it. You're canceled. You're dead. Right. And that's it. And I think that he will need people to enforce that. Hataru would be a perfect candidate. Uh, if anyone's played Deception, I understand it completely. Right. Uh, Hataru from the Order Realm, there is no gray area. It is just black and white, you know. Um, on some issues it works, on some issues it doesn't, right? Um, because there are certain things that, you know, uh, should not be entertained or, or, or allowed to happen. And I think that through Liu Kang trying to, you know, after seeing everything and experiencing everything, he's like, right, I've got to fix this. Okay, I've got to do something. So he, he literally manipulates everything. Um, and regardless of that manipulation, the very, you know, fabric of our soul is still going to find a way to break free. Or as Ian Malcolm said in Jurassic Park, life finds a way. And that's how it works because we are all flawed. And, uh, and part of that, um, part of that flaw is um is recognizing how we deal with that flaw you know so i would not be surprised if if you know Liu kang has someone like otaru as an enforcer if you will you know and other people to enforce this perfect realm that he's created um and then you know perhaps maybe as the story goes along you know, characters like Scorpion and Sub-Zero who, who God knows, you know, maybe maybe they've made them brothers so that way there wouldn't be any clan wars or anything like that, you know, but then, but then regardless, fate still finds a way. Like, fate is still going to push, you know, in, in directions that are, are inevitable. And that's why I think, like, I think Shang Tsung, you know what, I, like, people might say, oh, yeah, Shang Tsung's going to be bad. The, the funny part is that Shang Tsung, like he could be bad, sure, but what would be really interesting is that Shang Tsung actually becomes like the good guy or or kind of like the anti-hero, you know, so he doesn't have to be good good guy, <laughs> you know, like that sort of shit, right? Like he actually, he actually is the anti-hero, you know, and for whatever reason, for example, he, he, um, he, he knows like the truth of things. It's like, look, you know, Lou, you can you can try and do this stuff, but you are going to cause more problems. And and regardless of anything, people are still going to forge their own destiny, whether it's good or bad. And Shang might end up in a bit. I've said this before. I'd love to see like an origin story for how Shang Tsung becomes Shang Tsung, how how he became that way. There are leaks coming out that apparently he's a Titan and Tana's a Titan and stuff like that. I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if, like, so, so let's, let's, let's sort of go down the, a little bit of a theory crafting here. And this is lazy effing writing if they do this, I tell you what, the people on Twitter will be like, oh my god, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. I can't believe they didn't think of this for a few games. Um, that Liu Kang actually manipulates Katana. Right, so so if Katana, for example, if Katana's a Titan, she kills kills the kids, right? What if it's because that Liu Kang has brainwashed her in the same way that Xiao Khan brainwashed Katana and Sindel? Right? What if that was the case? What if Melina's infection isn't really an infection, and it's been something that they have suppressed all this time, and then? You know they can't suppress it anymore right and it would be lazy storytelling to, to go that route people will be like oh my god what a twist and it will be a twist right 
and and it, by the way, just just so we're clear, like it is confirmed that the, all the previous storylines exist. Just because this one is Liu Kang's little, you know, fantasy land, doesn't mean to say that it's now the only canon. Okay, so you know, for the people out there going, well, this has to be canon now because I said it. It's the latest game that has to be the way. Shut that. Shut up. Right. I don't. I don't buy into that rubbish. Right. And I say this to people too. If you know, just because there's a bad MK game doesn't mean to say that, you know, um, like suddenly the entire MK series is, is dead. It's not. Just believe what you want to believe. Play what you want to play. It's as simple as that. So I, yeah, I, I, I would not be surprised if Lou is the big bad. Um, I, I would not be surprised at all. Uh, and that somehow Shang Tsung becomes an anti-hero. Maybe Hitata is involved. Um, as an enforcer because of the way he is and Lou realizes that to keep his realm in this utopic type mode he has got to have someone working behind the scenes a head, you know his right-hand man to do that Atari would be a perfect fit for that um, and uh, I think Darius was from the order realm as well um, and that's the thing that that could be very well very well the story um, and I guess we'll just, I don't know, I get, you know, we've got less than three months, so we'll find out eventually, uh, unless somebody like, you know, uh, manages to, um, data mine something before then. But, um, let me know what you guys think. I, I, I have a really strong feeling that Lou's going to be the bad guy. You know, to me, it's not a surprise given the way he's behaved and the way he talks and all this sort of crap. You know, he was a revenant. So if you will. You know, you could you could add into the fact that he he ha he carries this corruption, that that eventually you know in all, like because he's trying to like overcompensate, so he becomes like super super good, you know, and that compensation because of the corruption that he faced and went through, same with Katana, um, actually makes them the bad guys, um, and or like I said, you know, he he might mind control or corrupt Katana. Or something like that. Who knows? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you just... You, you just don't know. You just don't know. But I reckon he's the bad guy. You know? Um, and, you know, he's he's the dragon. You know, like, you know, because he's you know, a little bit of a reference to Bruce Lee and stuff like that. You know, there's been talks about a Naga coming back. What does a Naga have? Right? He's the dragon king. He could resurrect his army. You know, it all could be tied together. For all we know, and this would be really strange. I mean, this would be really, really, really strange. That Liu Kang becomes Onaga. Think about it. Just, you know, okay, like detach common sense and facts and, and everything. And just think about it for a second. Who's the only character that has a fatality that turns into a dragon? Right? Liu Kang. Now what if, what if, Onaga is like the final form for Ogre, slash true Ogre, like we had in Tekken, um, in MK1. So he actually, like, he becomes corrupted more and more over time, his grip to trying to hold everything in place becomes worse and it actually becomes a corruption, and he actually manifests and transforms into his final form of, of Onaga. Right? That'd be batshit. <laughs> uh, anyway, see you next time.